Hello and welcome back to the Fight and Talk 2 podcast with myself, Mr. Fight and Talk, aka Connor, joined today by ex-MMA fighter, John the Hitman Hathaway. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today, John. I really appreciate taking time out of your day to have a conversation with me, ma'am. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, no worries at all. It's, honestly, the pleasure, pleasure is all mine. Um, so really, what I wanted to ask was, what got you into MMA all them years ago? Uh, I mean, I the first time I watched it, I think it was on a Sky Sports mix kind of program. So it was just a mix of different UFC fights. And I, I kind of just fell in love with the sport straight away, really. I think I was probably about 14, 13, 14. And uh, I mean, that, that was it. I just started, started practicing, you know. Because now as well. So I kind of tell some of my students nowadays that, like, they've got it so lucky with what they can watch and learn on YouTube. Because I remember going on to, I think it was like bjj.org and like you're going through and kind of like looking at still images and written descriptions. And that, now you've got like videos by some of the best coaches in the world just, just up on YouTube all the time. Yeah, it's, it's crazy yeah. the amount yeah. that the game just has great changed. Sport. Oh, yeah, it's incredible to see him, the latest Bellator or UFC fighters or even just some of the the young guys coming in through shoot and stuff and the, the level kind of what they're at now at a younger age than what, what they were originally even though I started so young when I started like, it was just wasn't enough high level people to learn off really yeah of course obviously you, you did start so many years ago but there's always going to be someone else that started younger isn't there yeah I mean, it's just the way I they look at um, Norbert from London shoot he like was in the gym at 14 but in London shoot rather than letting us up a shoot till I was like 20 to high level which is why he's he's in the place where he is now yeah yeah of course of course we had Norbert on the other day and he's he's such a lovely guy as well you know I, I sparred with him four years ago oh, when he was 17 when he was 17 he was beating me up I was 24 you know and he's just been a monster for such a long time he's a real he's a real killer uh, so this is the thing I remember, I mean, we always talk about it every time I go up there and see him, real good learn, but you're like, I just remember him being a kid, you, you know, I guess it's, it's hard to say he's a kid, I mean, he's always a, always a, a fair side 14 year old, but yeah, just like, he was young back in the day, and now he's just, he's grown up into this just amazing, amazing competitor. Yeah, yeah, he's, it, honest, and he is such a nice guy as well, he was talking a little bit on the show about how he tried to be a persona, because he right. saw many, so many other fighters having this persona, and he said he was, you know, wearing a super tight shirt obviously he's, he's ripped as well you know he's wearing a super tight shirt yeah. and he's got his sunglasses on and you know it, it's not him it's not who he is as a person so it, it, uh, there obviously is quite a lot of hype that you need to feel you need to live up to you know did, did you ever, ever have any issues with uh with... i mean he's he's gonna live up to it, definitely oh 100 100 percent. sorry you just broke up me a little bit, Connor. I don't know what question that you asked. That's all right. That's all right. I just said, did you feel that you had to have a persona when you were coming through, uh, coming through the rankings? Uh, no, I mean, I was, I was always just, just myself, really. I don't think I could ever really put anything on, really. <laughs> I suppose you'd have to have an acting degree or something to, to, to put on an extra show for everyone, you know? I think so. It's, some people, it just comes very natural, and it's not necessarily acting. They're just very kind of charismatic in that way. You know, I even uh, love my hate. Like obviously Conor McGregor kind of changed the game with how well he did his thing, you know, and uh, he was definitely uh, something to aspire to be for some people. I mean, some people have done it in opposite ways. I think you you look at kind of um, Henry Cejudo or, or Kobe uh, and like they're, they're kind of like ultimate heel, but they play the heel role so well. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like a WWF kind of style yeah it is it is they they play the villain very well exactly like you said, yeah. man. they do play the villain so having a, a nickname like the hitman obviously that corresponds to uh, you know the hit what's his name Kev, kevin brett the hitman heart or something is it a similar sort of correspondence to how you got your nickname or <laughs> Uh, I mean, to, to be fair, I, was, I guess when we used to, I guess we'd be like part of the Heart Foundation or something, you know what I mean, when we were wrestling. 
those were kids. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But is that is that is that how you actually got your nickname as the Hitman, or? Uh, I don't really know. I imagine it'd probably be from like Tommy Hearns rather than uh, Bret Hart. But I mean, I I guess especially for my first, I think like five or six fights, they were all just quite quick and to the point. Do you know what I mean? Getting in, getting the guy, taking him down in my corner, and uh, I kind of. Forcing him into either a bad position or a submission, really. Yeah. So I guess it's it more towards the kind of clinical side of things and how I, how I did it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Because obviously you you had a fourteen fight win streak, which is which is quite an achievement, um, you know. And obviously back in the day, people weren't as as technically skilled as they are nowadays. But to get a fourteen fin uh, fourteen fight win streak is is absolutely crazy. How, did you feel like there was a lot of pressure going into each fight, having that unbeaten record? Um. I guess slightly more when, when it starts getting up and, and you're in the UFC, it gets a little bit more on it. But at the, at the time, it was just getting to kind of work and just trying to get out as many fights as I can to kind of get used to the career I'd kind of chosen, really. Yeah, of course. Of course. And then, obviously, towards the, le- the later side of your career, you obviously couldn't fight anymore due to, due to your Crohn's, Crohn's disease, right? And how much of a mental yeah. impact did that have on you, you know, having to, to sacrifice your your passion and what you love to do for, for obviously, you know, you need to do it for your life as well, but what kind of mental implications did that have on you? Right. Um, it was just more frustrating because it could kind of, I mean, I'd got some fights out. What did I have in the end? I think it's like five fights when I had a UC or, or Crohn's basically. And it always be the thing of like, is it going to flare up before this fight? Cause I end up pulling up, I think I have three or four fights as well. Yeah. So it's just that annoying thing of like, it, it's such a, <laughs> I never wanted to be the guy pulling out of fights because it's always one of them annoying things where like, you've trained hard, they've also trained really hard. And then, then you both have a fight and sometimes it could be, I mean, you're lucky if it was over four weeks out because generally they could find a replacement, but sometimes, you know, it could just get really bad within the last couple of weeks and you pull out and it's like two weeks left. It's completely unfair. It's, yeah, I mean, some professional, it's, it's unfair on the, the other guy as well. I mean, I had it a little bit before one fight where I ended up taking a, I had to keep taking the prednisone, which is the kind of the anti-inflammatory steroid, which they mm-hmm. prescribe you to like, kind of like keep the inflammation down just so I could get through with fight, but that kind of affects you in kind of other ways, like stops recovery so well and your, your body just doesn't function as well when you've, when you've got something going on anyway. And then you also have to take medication to kind of suppress it and stop it from, from affecting you so much. Yeah, of course. Of course, but obviously you didn't go too far away from actually fighting yourself. You you still in and around fighting constantly, right? Yeah, I mean, I probably took like three or four years off just not doing anything because it's a, it's got me a bit out. I almost stopped watching you see so much. It just couldn't be around too much thing over. But I mean, uh, definitely over the last like two, three years, I've kind of massively i guess got got the bug back and just enjoy watching the sport so much and uh kind of where we even just just straight grappling nowadays or, or kind of the the k1 and boxing size just enjoying combat sports again really yeah of course and, and like you say the development of uh of mma and of fight sports in general over the past couple of years since kind of conor mcgregor made it a bit more well known than it ever was but it's it's just very very enjoyable to watch now as well the the shows that the UFC Bellator and even Cage Warriors stuff like that the shows that they're putting on are mm-hmm. very very exciting and they've got a lot of a lot of exciting matchups as well. Yeah, definitely the the level of everything. I say even Cage Warriors level is always good, but it's, it's now excellent. Do you know what I mean? It really is a every show's kind of come on so much leaps and bounds. Yeah, so there's good fights in every promotion nowadays. Yeah, and it's, it, you're never too far away from uh, from another set of fights. You know, obviously there's UFC this weekend. There was the previous weekend. The, there's just so many organisations mm-hmm. putting on so many good bouts, like you say, man. Yeah, to be fair, I completely missed this uh, this weekend's one. I kind of forgot that there was even a UFC. I can see that uh, one of my friends mentioned me about the Edgar fight and stuff, and you just like said, say how much it's on nowadays. Yeah, it was a it was a crazy weekend of fights. Crazy weekend for sure, man. Um, what do you think about like longevity in this sport? Obviously, you fought Diego Sanchez. I think I think I wrote it down. You fought him like ten years ago when when he was twenty nine. 
and obviously right. you would have been 23 you were you know very very still very young in your career but he's obviously still fighting obviously not at the level he was when he was fighting you you kind of got prime diego sanchez whereas what, what do you think about right. fighters fighting on almost past their prime and you know past their past their sell by date basically what's your view on that it's it's hard when everyone's got a slight different sell by dates and it, it depends how i guess how you fight and how you train you know i can only speak on on kind of my, my myself i mean the way I, I was never really a massive finisher so i was i was a grinder in in my fights and i had to be the way i, I trained as well so kind of training is always long and tough and, and grindy for me so it kind of takes a lot out on your body so it depends kind of i guess your, your fighting style and how you can kind of i guess stay injury free because mm. i mean you pick it's just you pick up injuries in this kind of sport and ideally you pick up less than what what you do or what you can do you know yeah yeah of course of course obviously we saw uh alistair overing fighting at the weekend and he's obviously i think a little bit over 40 now and he's taking a lot of losses at the back end of his career, BJ Penn, these kind of people that were stars right. so many years ago that people getting into the sport now are only going to see their consecutive losses, you know, and it must be, it, it must be, it must be tough. You know, you yourself, you only had two losses inside the cage, but it right. must, you know, it feel, feels bad it's, after it, a loss, right? It's hard. I guess, uh, yeah, it feels terrible. I mean, I guess in, in Penn and kind of open service, they're fighting in the UFC, so they're, they're fighting the top guys in the world. It's, it's for the, it must have to, to lose like the prime and in, in the best show in the world. So it's always going to be a tough fight. They're not taking easy fights. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Um, so what did, back in the day, obviously, what did you used to do for recovery? Recovery. We were speaking a little bit about recovery a second ago, but did you have a lot of fighters kind of get into yoga and doing Pilates and stuff like that? That's complete opposite to actual fighting, but it's obviously very good for your stretching and your mobility. Was it, was it something you ever incorporated in your training, doing something along them lines, or was it pure kind of on the mats, rolling in the ring, that kind of stuff? I mean, not much. I mean, we used to stretch and stuff and do some mobility stuff after after training, but I think uh, just that stuff become, it's, I see some of the, some of the street guys like Norbert and stuff like that, they're doing the kind of like, is it cryo chambers where they kind of like bring them down almost like an ice bath but in, a, in a kind of chamber. And I think it's just more prevalent with athletes being able to have access to kind of these things nowadays. I mean, we, I used to do ice baths, but that was like a, a personal thing rather than going to a place that was just me at home with some ice in a bath really but, um, <laughs> yeah I, it's it's great it's great for recovery like i said i didn't really do a necessarily go to yoga sessions I mean, we, every so often i do like a, a big gram or a dynamic yoga the hot yogas were, mm -hmm. were quite good like once every month or once every two months kind of thing just head down there for because they're like an hour and a half session two hour sessions in the heat so it's, it's basically like a sauna but you kind of turn some stretching as well at the same time so they were always handy to do as well yeah, yeah, definitely. I was actually down at the the cryo center this afternoon. They they invited me down after they saw the Norbert show and said, you know, jump in this chamber. I do triathlon as well, so they said jump in this Very chamber cool. and see what it's like. And it was it was it was really cold to be honest with you. Okay. It was, it <laughs> was saying, very, I only ever seen Norbert do it on like Instagram and stuff. Like that, so I haven't actually been down myself, but um, I mean, it always looks cool. Yeah, get down, like, get down. I'm sure they'd be uh, they'd be thrilled to have you, man. It's down there and stuff. So. I've seen uh, Norbert and Shipman and Roos and stuff like that doing the, the cryo chamber. So, uh, I mean, definitely a cool thing. I mean, I, I've kind of a, we were looking actually for uh, for the gym down here, just looking at getting almost like a, a big chest freezer to have kind of outside and just uh, board it up and just have that and turn it on in the morning, crack the ice and just have that as like a, an ice bath for some of the guys because we uh, run a CrossFit gym down here as well. Okay. CrossFit and combat. So, uh, it just a, it's generally a good thing to do. Some kind of like cold immersion bathing so yeah definitely the body. yeah definitely definitely so so what's your day-to-day -day routine now then and like life outside of the ufc kind of thing what, what do you fill your time with uh, i mean just got a little one so generally quite busy with the the little baby again i normally teach about three classes a day in uh in kind of combat whether it be a uh, wrestling or ground stuff or, or striking and then uh yeah just a little couple personal training sessions if I, if I need to or just helping some of the other kind of athletes out from our gym really and then uh, when I can I try to get up to obviously get up to shoot get up to 10th planet London and uh, do some grappling and um, I still run down and uh, get down to 
my local amateur boxing club, Brighton Hove Amateur Boxing Club, which nice. is a really good place. It's like Tommy Welsh down there, a good, good boxer. Yeah. Every week coming out and um, yeah, just kind of keeping myself busy in the combat sports. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It must be, you know, you're, you never want to stray too far. Like you said, you had a couple of years away from it and a couple of years to, to level your head and stuff. But, you know, you it's so prevalent that, you know, fighters want to stay around fighting, don't they? Norbert himself mm-hmm. said that even when he doesn't, he's not fighting anymore, he'll be doing something else to, to do with fighting. Or obviously, all, all the guys down at shoot, you can just see that they'll, they'll be in and around shoot for the rest of their lives, you know, whether they're fighting yeah. or they're not fighting. I can't not. I mean, they're, they're basically family down there. This is this is the kind of bonds what you make over, like, I guess these kind of hardships and this kind of combat kind of sport. You're like, you just make friends kind of for life, really. Yeah, definitely. How often do you get down to shoot? Then do you do you, do you still train? You know, would you go down there to train? And why did you go to shoot anyway? Because are you from Brighton originally, or where are you from? Yes, it's always Brighton and Hove. I was, but obviously, um, I guess my first trainer was Sol Gilbert, and he was from London Shoot. But I mean, London Shoot's kind of it is the best place. Or mixed martial arts in uh, in the UK, so it was kind of a it was a no brainer to kind of go up there and obviously just I fell in love with the other athletes and, uh, and the coaches there. So um, I mean, before kind of lockdown, I was always up one, once a week, and even kind of like through the first couple of lockdowns, I was I was getting up there as much as I could. Yeah, of course, man. So it's just this last one that I haven't been able to really travel too much. Yeah, of course. Well, you're not allowed to, are you? But like, I, I guess I mean, if you're a pro athlete. I mean, I'm still on the books with the UFC, so I still get drug tested all the time. So I mean, I got drug tested I think twice in the last two months, so just for Christmas, and then what was it about a week ago or something? Yeah, that's that's insane. How come you're still how come you're still on the books? Because that was one of my questions. I was going to say um, you're obviously still being tested by USADA and stuff up until last year, and obviously this year. But why is that? Why do they keep you on for such a long time? Uh, well, I mean, I, I'd still love to can kind of compete one day. I mean, I've been pushing my body more this last year i had surgery two years ago so i mean i i am for for i think it's about six years maybe just a little bit more so when i kind of stopped fighting fight and again i had to pull out of that i think it was around four weeks out because again i had, I had another flare i didn't kind of want to compete with that and then um i guess i kind of went through about two years of basically trying different medications so because the medication what I'd been on for, I guess, for five years, I think it was something along those lines. Mm-hmm. The next step up were uh, immune suppressants. And they're kind of like a, a weird kind of thing where they, I mean, it's the same. I, I moved on to biologicals after the immune suppressants. So you, you do these immune suppressants and you start to take and they have kind of like a six-week period, six to eight-week period where like, like, and then you say six months go past, uh, well, sorry, six, six weeks, you know, two months or whatever go past and everything seems fine. And you have another flare up with them. So then, then they're either not strong enough or they're not the right one. So they change it out Then you move on to another one. And sometimes you have bad reactions to it. So sometimes like, never mind, I just started being sick on it violently. I got to take it for two days, was sick pretty much constantly for it. And then had to stop taking that. And then you have like a week off them and then you try something different or you try a different dose. So uh, it kind of just went through a process of that for like two years, but couldn't find one which worked well for my body. Mm-hmm. Then basically I went through the same situation where you go into something called a biological, which is again like an infusion one, which works on the same kind of thing where it's, it's your own immune system attacking you. So it kind of like tries to suppress your immune system. And I think I went through about a year of them, year and a half maybe. And it ended up being about three different three different ones where like they, they work for you for a little bit. And like, I always remember because they were split like eight weeks apart and it was like a, you had to be there for like two hours, I think, an hour for an infusion and an hour to like, I guess for reactions, you had to sit around mm-hmm. and uh, I'd always feel great necessarily for like six weeks. And then the last two weeks I'd start feeling a little bit unwell and then you'd have it again. You'd feel great for six weeks and kind of that would happen. And then say it would stop working and I'd get flare up and then I'd have to go back onto the uh, anti-inflammatory steroids like the prendiserone to bring it down again. And then you'd, have a couple of weeks off then you'd start another course of a different one so it kind of like was up and down there it took like i think like three years three or four years of just trying different medications feeling all right for a little bit it going slightly wrong and then going back onto a different medication and then um yeah then i, I think i spent about a year <laughs> like just in and out of hospital 
after that or like while I was kind of slightly on this so that was the last year and then then I managed to get private kind of um surgery sorted out I was going to have surgery on the NHS but then they kept pushing it like because it's a it's a weird one because it would be like a Saturday surgery so if anything came in on the day it means I'd get pushed back to the next Saturday and that happened like twice and I just managed to get private got it sorted out and uh, I basically have had my large bowel removed Mm -hmm. so that was done over three surgeries in about eight months that's crazy so I mean yeah crazy experience it was (laughs) yeah a real crazy couple of years but obviously the the first surgery sorry go on I mean yeah I'm now off, off all my medications it's like not having any problems I don't have any flare ups or anything like that so it's so different because I don't have a large bowel so I guess my body funny and stuff but this is the kind of things where I'm just finding out I mean that was two years ago I had uh, that surgery so I've kind of been building my body back up to be able to kind of get back in and, and, and train at a high high level again really yeah of course and it's not so much I, I can train at a high level for like one session and, but then especially in the early days I'd be wiped out for like three days and then I could train hard again and then be wiped out but kind of just reconditioning the body back into being able to handle the kind of stresses of a uh, combat really yeah of course because obviously you are only 33 and yeah. most fighters are only in their prime at 33 you it's, it's strange because you had so much you had such a big chunk of your career being so young mm. now you know obviously having seven seven years off like you say you you could still come back and still make a run for a belt do you know what i mean it's there is no kind of limit to what you could do after this obviously having your, your your bowel removed and stuff like that and and having the Crohn's disease but you know you, you you were always very dominant when you were fighting and I'm sure you played you you went in with the same kind of mindset to your body as well of fighting anything and fighting to get through so would, would that be a, a goal of yours to to get back into an organization like the UFC obviously you're still getting tested by them yeah but- 100% I mean almost almost anything I just want to I guess compete again I've got the kind of like competition bug you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting, my body's getting better and better each time of dealing with kind of training and training at a high level with high level people. So it's definitely something I, I, I love to do again. And who would you, who would you fight? Who would you feel like you could ma- be matched up against? Obviously when you, when you left the UFC, you were, you know, quite well ranked, you were fighting some big names and stuff like that. Who do you feel like in today's market that you'd be, 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 be matched up against? Uh, to be honest, I never called out anyone. I generally fight whoever they want me to fight. Yeah, it's always easier that way, isn't it? You know, I would just look to to make an exciting, exciting fight. Really, yeah. always one of the things you never want to try. I guess game plan for each individual person. You just want to do what you do best, and, and kind of you know you got to be wary of of slight things what they can do. But a lot of the times, just implementing your will or the way you do things on someone. And that's what will stop them from, from doing too much. Yeah, it's the first person to implement their game plan usually comes out on top, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, most certainly. Yeah. Well, your your last fight that, that got cancelled before, obviously you took a bit of time away, was against Gunnar Nelson. Would you ever think of fighting Gunnar Nelson again? Because he's obviously still active. Yeah, actually I haven't, when, I haven't seen his last fight, actually. I can't remember what his last one was. But um, yeah, I mean, Gunnar was always an incredible competitor and... Uh, always great even on just on the normal grappling scene as well as uh in UFC and stuff so I've always been a fan of his and, and watching all his stuff yeah definitely man definitely well I'm all, I'm all wrapped up man thank you very much for awesome. taking time out of your day and I, I really appreciate it and uh like I hope I hope we will see you in the UFC soon and well, you know be cool if you ever down shoot as well man hopefully I'll see you uh see you at shoot as well at some point it'll be great Next time you go up there, you've got my my details and stuff. Next time you go down okay. there, I'd love to love to meet you in person as well, man, for sure. Perfect. No, I'd really like that. I said I was, it was really annoying because I was going up pretty much every Thursday, and then uh, this latest lockdown to some because even though I'm kind of still press athlete, it kind of is a bit bit harder to kind of travel up and, and kind of warrant doing it. And so I'm still I'm still kind of like seeing my folks and stuff like that. So it's a bit un, unfair all around for me to be uh, doing that, basically. Yeah, of course. No, I understand. I understand. But I said the the bonus, I guess, of, of going through all the things what I did is uh, I'm on like the vulnerable persons list. So I should be getting my vaccine actually like fairly soon as well, which should be uh, handy. Yeah, happy so days. Make, make kind of getting around and doing everything a little bit easier. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you don't have the the implications of that. But you know, while we're on that, did that affect you at all over the past year? Obviously, being being more vulnerable. Did you did you catch Corona or anything? Or no, no catch anything. To be fair, I'm generally don't really catch much, like many colds or anything like that. So um, I mean, touch wood, obviously. But <laughs> <laughs> everything's everything's been kind of all right and fairly fairly well and happy for me and my body. Amazing, and that's that's all you can ask for, really. You you obviously had so many years of struggles. Now you've kind of come over all of that, and you can you can really enjoy being you again and and being a fit physical person, which is which is amazing. I know it's gonna be good. That's it. Nice one. Well, thank you very much again for for having a chat with me. I look forward to meeting you in person, definitely, man. And uh, I'll I'm definitely drop your line when I head up there. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much, Connor. Thank you. Bye. See you later on, buddy. Cheers, man. Bye.